Good evening, everybody. It is 7.45 p.m. on Saturday, August 13th, 2022, and it is time for gratitudes and prayer list prayers. In the middle of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I already said grace, so... Definitely grateful for this. Before we begin, <clears throat> I want to talk about the catchphrase or slogan or whatever you want to call it that I used for the three videos today. It will be the third one will be on this video, which is drop out. And the slogan is to turn on, tune in, drop out. <clears throat> and it goes way back to the 1960s, late 1960s. And it came from Dr. Timothy Leary, who was a psychologist at Harvard University, who began experiments with LSD. And became a little bit of a guru, spiritual, kind of, a, you know, and, and, and psychological guru at that time that um, led the, uh, the hippie movement, the counterculture. And um, interesting thing is that 
We have some people will do drugs. And, uh, you know, whatever negative effects there are, they use them to, you know, they have inclinations to, uh, you know, they're seeking type people. They're curious people. You know, they're pretty intelligent and uh, they engage the world around them. And so when they do drugs, that kind of factors into that, you know, and they find a way to sort of allow it to enhance, you know, what they're already trying to do. Now, let me tell you, drugs often get in the way of those things, but for somebody like Timothy Leary, you know, um, well, it's like anything in life. Everything that we grow to learn presents itself as a challenge. You know, um, whether Bach wanted to write it, you know, at a, at a <coughs> excuse me, I think in the Art of Fugue, there's something like, uh, how many voices in that canon? I forget. I'm gonna say like eight or something like that. Some, some, it's like a lot. And that's difficult to do, obviously, you know, but like, you know, um, because of the rules of motion of all those voices, especially in a canon too, a strict canon like that, you know, wow. Um, So a lot of times drugs will present themselves as like, you know, yeah, something happens that's not that good. You know, I've had, I mean, I've had difficult things happen on LSD. I've never had a, a trip where I was terrified or anything like that. But I've had some, you know what I mean? Like times I could have been like, you know, that were, that were challenging. But it also taught me how to handle them. And that didn't just teach me how to get, how to get through a bad drug trip at all. I came away with like, you know, increased understanding about how to, you know, navigate life in different ways. These things that I learned, or if I didn't learn them on drugs, you know, though, but sometimes like, sometimes drugs could also cause uh, situations to become acute. And I don't just mean like in that bad way. I just, but I mean like sensory acute, psychological acute. And so, you know what I mean? Like working at something at a magnified level. So it allows you to sometimes deal with things in a more, um, more in your face way, so you have to deal with it, than you might encounter in everyday life, but it also makes it, makes it clearer in your head what's going on. Like, oh, all right. So, um, so that's what he was trying to teach. Uh, whether you agree with that or not, I don't think that it's a good idea, you know, but, but it was a different time. It was very different. It was like, society changed, began to change radically by the end of the 1960s. It was really different. I mean, like we had, you know, Elvis Presley came about in the 50s and that, you know, like rock music started to bud. And by the time we get to the late 1960s, so much had awoken. I don't think that we'll ever have another in American side. I don't think we'll have something like that happen again because, like, once that happened, you know what I mean. Once that happened, it of course paved the way for everything that followed it. But um, you know, we almost like went from like Victorian to like hippies. You know what I mean? If I could, if you want to make it like, you know what I mean? If you want to really, it was a big. It was really big, you know? Um, and if you look, of course, at the time, like in the early 1970s, Richard Nixon was the president. It didn't really reflect a lot of the attitudes of the young people in the country. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, anyway, so let me, 
back up to Tron's who didn't drop out. This was a slogan he came up with, and he meant it pretty much the way I'm going to explain to you, pretty much. I added my own couple of things in there. But most people that, you know, most people are not Timothy Leary types. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I count myself as a Timothy Leary type. It's just the way I am. I'm a thinker, you know. Um, yeah, drugs have, have, have had, you know what I mean, have, have helped me figure things out. But I also, you know, I would have done all right without drugs, too. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I needed to take drugs to find myself or anything. I don't feel. Um, but... I'll explain those to you, you know, and, he, and most people that take drugs though are, are not going to, uh, and it's not any fault on them at all, but some people just, you know, most people don't respond to drugs in an intellectual type of fashion usually, um, but I think also it could have to do with culture, I really can, I don't know, not always, not always, but sometimes, you know, nurture versus nature sort of thing, I mean, who knows, really? I mean, who really knows? We don't know. Um, but, you know, for example, there are different classes. There are, there are two different big categories of tweaker that exist that I know of. Okay? And there are those that get high and have sex. And then there are those that, like, let's say, just to be general, get high and clean the house. And I'll tell you right now, like, they're very different cultures. Same drug. Same drug. Now, the tweakers that have sex are oftentimes not at all neat. Not at all. And then you have this other group that, like, you know, yeah, they, and some of them wouldn't even want to have sex. You know what I mean? It's not like they just hadn't kind of crossed their mind, but they're like, yeah, no, I'd rather do this, and it's usually some other, you know, activity. Now, of course, these are not two discrete groups. You know, they share, you know what I mean? There's crossover and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't. You know, there's all, everything in between, it runs the gamut, you know, but, um, but it's amazing. You'll find that, uh, you know, two very different reactions to the same drug. Just making my point there with that. Um, from my own experience, honestly, it took me a, for a, quite a while to get into like that the sex scene, basically with speed when I was younger. I was not a sex sweeter at all. Um, <clears throat> and I found this, let me put it this way, I want to share the story with you for an important reason. So... You know, sex is good, right? People enjoy sex. We all enjoy sex. sex. Sex sounds good. So I was, you know, I found myself in a scene where sex was like really, everyone was having sex. Now, I didn't want to have sex with everybody. But I did want to fit in. Who doesn't want to fit in? It's natural to want to, you know what I mean? If I have to spend some time around people, you want to get along with them. You want to have um, so I thought, well, or I ended up, I ended up, uh, finding guys that I did want to hook up with and I started to, and I had a good time and it was, you know, and, and all that. And, uh, but I slowly kind of got sucked in, you know what I mean? My mindset started to change. A little bit a little not not entirely not not like it never changed entirely but I noticed over time how speed became from went from a very a, a non-sexual drug to me to a very sexual drug um, and it doesn't mean now that it dominates my time but um, it it's it can at times you know what I mean? In the sense of, for example, um, you know, it is, an, it is an aphrodisiac, but I think, again, it, it has, 
I feel like for me, there was some kind of conditioning there a little bit. However, we don't know if that's really what it is. Sometimes, you know, God could have just led me over there, started to lead me over there, because that's where he wanted me to be. Um, which is the case anyway, you know what I mean? No matter what, like that's, that's what happened, but um, so there's all different kinds of people that have, you know, reaction to <coughs> reaction to drugs. I remember when I, you know, for example, to this day, my friend Mike Foley, when I first met him, all he smoked was weed. And so Mike was the only person I know that smoked a lot of weed at the time. And Mike was the kind of a guy. I had I had all my basically I had like all my for quite a while I had all my tweaker friends and then I had like Mike. Mike was the guy who didn't do speed. He had a job, and had a normal life. Whereas as far as you know, as far as like, I wouldn't call it normal, but like I mean, you know, lived in in the uh, in the hate, paid rent, had a job. Lived with people that didn't that only smoked weed. They didn't do other harder drugs, you know. So I mean, like, kind of like in San Francisco, that's pretty, you know, pretty normal. And I, you know, one of the things that we used to, he, you know, he always wanted me to smoke weed with him or whatever when we hung out. And then we would do something. Like he was always, he was not like a not do something kind of like, like smoke weed and just like fucking chill. Like ne it was always like. We're gonna smoke some weed, and then we had a project to work on. We're gonna like go here, or go there, and, or watch, watch some South Park, which was an active for, for someone like my guy. Like we're, it's a, an active thing. Television is always an active thing for, for guys like me, and I think like him as well. It's like where you know you're in, you're engaging that. It's never just a passive, you know. And I don't I don't think that you know some people's minds just work that way. I think that like if you wanted to become if you felt like you wanted to become more like that you're probably already on the way you know what I mean you probably already are that type of person so like yeah like, do things that you think would make you more like that absolutely but you probably already are because you wouldn't be thinking that otherwise you know it's like um, but so you know to this day when I think of smoking weed weed is a very act is, is a drug of like all right and one of the things that he would always do after he gets so we'd make a list you know what I mean? Get a list of, th of things going. And it's like, to this day, um, I kind of still have, you know, I was already like that anyway. You know what I mean? So, but, so, but that kind of like, he helped form, the, my, form my attitude about drug use on marijuana. You know? Um, and that's true for anyone really that begins to do drugs, is whoever they're around, for a while is going to kind of kind of shape that drug for that person. So, anyway, turn on, tune in, drop out. Did not mean drop out of school. Drop out of it, you know, stop participating in your life. But a lot of younger people on drugs are probably going to do that because drugs, you know, everybody has to watch on drugs. Um, and some people just can't steer it in the right way. But anyway, let me just read. Turn on. Begin to seek awareness of self, other people, and the world around you, and to be in harmony with creation. You know? I don't know how to describe this, other than, the, like, God. If you don't believe in God, whatever, it's fine. But, like, I'm going to say God because that's what I see. God, you know, just gives you some awareness, like, where you just become suddenly, you, we've all had it happen, whether it be something, you know, it can be something small, like, where you, all of a sudden, you just notice it's there, like, maybe you buy a car, you know, of a certain color or whatever, a certain type, and then all of a sudden, you start noticing them everywhere, right? 
it's that kind of a thing. It's that it's that sort of a, like oh boom, you get this awareness. I, I'm not sure you can make you know. Again, I think if you want to, you you know you're already there, so that's good. I mean, um, get this awareness of wanting to just be purposeful about yourself. Learn who you are. Why do you do the things you do? Why do you think you know? Figure yourself out, or at least be trying. Um, tune in. Well, that's where we actually do the figuring out, listening. Okay, so tune in is listen. Observe, analyze, listen, observe, analyze. So to figure this stuff out, my, my friend Bob, my old best friend Bob, one of the, you know, he had a lot of sayings, but one of my favorites is you never learn anything talking. You never learn anything talking. And it's true, you know. Of course, it's gonna be a smart ass, it'd be like Socratic method, you know what I mean? Of course, asking questions, but you know, let's keep it black and white here. And it's just like, you know, right. If you're in a classroom, you know, and you're like, instead of listening to what's being told, you're not picking up information. And this is all about, you know, and you also learn about yourself too. You know, this is why a lot of people talk, honestly, and listen to music in the car. I don't usually, you know, believe it or not, I'm not a big music in the car person. I'm a musician and I'm not a big music in the car person. I will, because I listen to music really purposefully. I, it's never, it's never, it's never, it's not background music. It has nothing to do with, because it's so important to me. It's because it, it's noisy to me if I'm not listening to it. That's why. I don't want it there because it's distract. You know, like I, I, when I fall asleep to the TV, sometimes it wakes me up and it's like, oh, I gotta, you know, I, I can't, you know, I don't like noise like that around, like constant. I can get used to it, but if I can have silence, I love it. You know, I don't try to bank on silence too much uh, because, you know, people can easily just take it away from you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's something that, like, that's why I don't make it too important because I mean, like, it's, it's too easy for people to fuck with. One of the things I will do, honestly, you know, more more important than silence is control of uh, maybe the types of ambient noise that you have. For example, like I have a noise maker, and I use it all the time. I use it all the time. I put headphones on. You know what I mean? And that for me can double the silence as well if I need it. You know what I mean? If I don't want to hear there's people fighting next door or something like that, I don't want to hear it, um, or you know, God knows what, or. Uh, an argument downstairs here in the parking lot and I want the you know the window open because it's hot or something I'll put my headphones on and listen to brown noise brown noise is like this it's one of the most soothing sounds in the world hold on I mean I have a host of other sounds I can listen to but I usually choose brown noise now connected to Spitz iPhone because it does a very good job of filtering out human speech and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Anything that's in that noise ring, or a, of a lot of things. A lot of things cannot get through a headphones with this playing on it. Like, I mean, listen to, this, listen to the frequency range. It sounds like a rush of a waterfall. You had like the you know the fall or something like that, or the beach with a bunch of waves coming out from the lock. What you know? It's centered a little bit lower. It's lower, you know. Um, anyway, back to what we were saying here. <coughs> Listen, observe, analyze. Participation in finding out who we are, what we do, and why, and to some extent, gain an understanding of others. But remember the old saying, this is definitely the part where I, I put, you know, this is all my writing, but like, this is definitely my own idea added in here. But remember the old saying, what people think of me is none of my business. Time spent actively thinking about whether or not Bill likes you better than Susie is not what we mean here. 
We can't help what comes to mind, but beyond that point, we can at least know whether or not it's something we wish to entertain. And generally speaking, whether Bill likes you more than Susie is something best dealt with thusly. Drop out. Disconnect, disengage, and eschew activities, behaviors, and act, excuse me, attitudes, behaviors, and activities that undermine the strength and integrity of the previous two steps. That means not making time for arguing, not primarily concerned with thinking and discussing what other people should be thinking and doing. So that way you don't have to do any of it. Not making time for pettiness, not going through your day, not understanding why you're doing what you're doing or knowing what you're doing or figuring that out on a macroscopic level, at least. For example, much of my day, I don't really know what's going to happen, but I have a, you know what I mean? I have an overall like plan and that is to focus on the Lord. All right. So like, it doesn't always have to be super specific. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean like you have to, it means you have to, you know, schedule all the time in your day. Like, you know, I don't like to do that personally. It doesn't work for me. So I don't do it. So don't worry. It doesn't mean that. Be purposeful. Eschew mindlessness. Don't overthink. What is overthinking? Thinking about Bill and Susie is overthinking. So you won't overthink if you follow the above as a guideline. All right. And that's going to be my gratitude for the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for our leaders in government, our President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and all members of the U.S. Congress. In California, we pray for our Governor Gavin Newsom and his family. In San Mateo County, we pray for all police, fire, and emergency personnel especially the Human Services Agency. We pray for Josette Trevino, the Department of Housing, and for all county agencies and employees. In South San Francisco, we pray for our Mayor Mark and the South San Francisco City Council. In San Francisco, we pray for Mayor London Breed and the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. We pray for the forgotten and alone for the GLBTQ pause community, especially the trans community, for those with HIV and AIDS, for the sick and the suffering, for those living through homelessness presently, for those with COVID-19 and post-COVID syndrome, for abode services and life moves, both of which help homeless people find, get into, and, and stay in housing, and for clergy suffering with addiction and chemical dependency. We pray for all ministries inside and outside of the church, for all clergy and religious, and for lay leaders alike, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, Bishop Mark Handley Andrus, Archbishop Salvatore Tortileone, 
St. Gregory's Abbey, Three Rivers, Michigan, Hospitality House in San Bruno, C. Episcopal Church in South San Francisco and San Bruno, the Diocese of California, the Archdiocese of San Francisco, Reverend Patrick Driscoll, St. Veronica's Catholic Church, the Reverend Patrick, I'm sorry, uh, Reverend Patrick Driscoll, St. Veronica's Catholic Church, the Reverend Deborah Hawkins, Bishop Louis Jelano, St. Bruno's Catholic Church in San Bruno, the Reverend David Grant Smith, and Emmanuel Church in Newport, Rhode Island. I pray for all members of my family, especially my father Alex and my mother Cheryl, as well as Kara Masick, Erwin Rossmeyer, Joshua, Jesse, Ben, and Max, my brothers, Mark, Jesse, and Diane Darling, Bob Ottaviano, Anna and Pieta Crumbie, Jocelyn Gerard, Donna Brown, and Diane Carlson. We pray for the perpetrators of abuse. We pray for sexual predators, for abuse of clergy, those sexually attracted to children, the perpetrators of sexual violence, for bullies, and for the perpetrators of the emotional abuse. I also pray for these members of my extended human family. I name aloud, beginning with Junior Irwin, Stuart Packman, Eric Mosness, Keegan Forbes, Michael Knoll, Coulter and Rhiannon, Richard Simmons, Jim White, Andrew Marmelstein, Dave Maloney, Keith Watley, Jimmy Harder, Michael Zorns, Tony Vucetich, Aaron Rogers, Ruben Padilla, Travis Carpenter, Kurt Berry, Larry Burdett, Janine and Mike Jones, TJ Hostomsky, Drunk Phil, June, Anne and Sam, Lou and Gina, Peter Steeler, Daniel Hudson, Clifton Barrett, Rawl and Barbara Laborde, Mike Smith, Margie Burke and her family, Kyle Andrew Schofield, Laura and Lydia, Jason Hayes, Jack and Ramit and their family. Gino and his family, Charles Ratcliffe, Chris Reinhardt, Dustin Keast, Matthew Russian, Tyler Davis, Daniel Fonseca, Michael and Corey, Ryan, Dean Varchetto, Pat Ford, Tina, Keith, Alexander, 
Matthew Mustashkin, Kevin Johansson, the Republicano family, Tyler Jordan Lowe, <clears throat> Tyler Smith. Excuse me. Marty and Kim Plyler and their family. Anita, David, Michael and his mother, Al, Cheeseburger, Kenny, Kendrick, Dylan, Charlene Myers, Jeffrey Marmelstein, Steve Buiza, the Pacific Family Medicine Clinic staff, Beth Lewis, Ken McCune, Bob and Alice Katz, Jen and Jesse, Steve Menini, Larry Lawton, Gabby Giffords, Jeff Henkel, Mark Zuckerberg and his family, John, Bill O'Reilly, Christopher Henning, Scott Akers, Debbie, George Jetson, Lil Kim, Gustavo Caldas, John Shuck, Greg Flowers, Rick Rivero, Andy Hand, Stephen and Bernadette Connolly, the people of Ukraine, Skeeter, Russell, Vladimir Putin, Xander Wilkinson, Tom, Carl Perino, Steve Wilkinson, Rich and Sue Wilkinson, Angel Hernandez, Clinton Russell, Olson Dental, Brian Wilson, Garrett Canterbury, and Gene Kwan. Last but not least, we pray for those that have passed on from this life, inside and outside the faith and fear of the Lord, especially the holy souls in purgatory and the, and the church triumphant, as well as the repose of the souls of Howard Connolly, Christine Baker, the Reverend and Mrs. Fred and Cheryl Merrick, Nick Lee, Mickey McGee, Keith Lloyd, James, Dustin Rasmussen, John Judicki, Anita Rossmeyer, Phil DiMartino, Father Benedict Reed, Winfred and Mary Ann Johnson, Demetrius Fleming Davis, John Gotti, my grandparents on both sides, Jay Darling, Tyler White, Ron Popeil, Priscilla, Edison, Sean Bowman, Bob Dole, Betty White, Bob Saget, Harry Reed, Adolfo Caldas, Bill Brown, the Mariposa family, Lori Ram, Robert E. Phelan, Norma Liebke, George Saldivar, the victims of the Uvalde, Texas Elementary School shooting, Jaime Escalante, Levi, my Uncle Dave, Sean, Phil Spector, and Sasha Krause.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's go and do oral hygiene.
Yeah. In in an uh, episode of South Park. They use the duck and cover uh, slogan for an earthquake, or for, for a volcano in the town. And uh, there's this scene where I'm like, these guys are like, oh quick, the lava's coming, the quick duck and cover. And the lava just went over and killed them, you know what I mean? Like, it's like it would do with the bomb, I guess, the atomic bomb, but it's kind of funny. There's, I think there's, there was one civil defense film where they, <laughs> this guy was like sh shielding himself with a news, you're supposed to like shield yourself with a news, anything you have, you know, to shield the skin. Because depending on how far away you are, um, it, you know, and how strong, you know, how, how far you are, you are from the bomb and how strong it is. And of course, like, some people just make it flash burns or whatever. Um, so, you don't know, so they just tell you to duck and cover. Um, all right. Duck and cover. Which is different from the homeless slogan, which is cold duck and cover.
tell. You've heard of floss, this is what it looks like. It's a string. everybody <clears throat> remember to brush your teeth the boss especially and most especially to say your prayers and I'll see you in the next video I love you all peace